Alright, so I gotta be honest here, Mortal Kombat the movie is set to come out in a couple of weeks. And I don't know if I can stomach watching it. I'm an avid watcher of the Mortal Kombat series, and by that I mean I've seen the original take from the 90s as well as watched all sorts of playthroughs and compilations of the games. But while I simply haven't played them because I didn't really care for playing fighting games myself, I'm all too familiar with the gutsy and gory fatalities and quirks that the games have to offer. And though I have absolutely no problem watching these kind of things when they're rendered on video game characters for some reason, despite some of the horrid things that happens to their biology, the jump from directly translating that into a real high quality CGI 2021 movie is something I'm conceptually all aboard for. I mean, Mortal Kombat should be presented with that in mind, of course, but... I'm squeamish, man. I'd love to actually see the series potentially done right in live action, but if it's even half as bad as the actual games are, I just can't bring myself to watch it. At least not on the big screen where it's generally you know, look down upon to vomit in the same room as 50 people. Even still, the R rating is here to stay, and we're gonna talk about that a bit today. Cause I'm pretty sure you've noticed, but it's currently the latest trend movement going on across the board in the superhero genre. Mostly. Not to be confused with the R value as my British Google searchings keep trying to poster up to me. Also do be sure to reach the end of this video as I've got a small change coming that I'll show right at the end. Only I care about it, but it's a thing anyway. Now, the R rating actually has a good bit of history, starting off officially back in 1973 with the release of The Exorcist, granting both massive success and a good amount of vomiting and faintings in cinema audiences, apparently. I, I still, I'm not gonna do it myself, though. Even still, there's been all sorts of big successes through the years that leaned into this rating. Notable ones include Terminator 2 in 1991, Saving Private Ryan in 1998, which again, I couldn't even handle the first scene of when watching it in English class, thanks for that teacher. There's also The Matrix, 300, The Hangover, which those make, you know, enough sense. There's a couple pieces that fall through the cracks, like the infamously overcharged King's Speech being R-rated for some reason. Still, as the years went on, R ratings became somewhat more common on the big screen. Maybe that says something about us as a society at the time. Even still, you may have heard of such productions like Ted, The Wolf of Wall Street, Fifty Shades of Grey, Kingsman, Mad Max, and then there was the film that truly broke the seal, Deadpool in 2016. This really is the true start of the current R-rated craze. Up to this point, we're a good eight years into superhero fatigue, not even touching on all the other material that popped up in the years prior to 2008. But even still, with Marvel's cinematic universe at the forefront of the formula for mainstream superhero productions, it was overtly clear that the R rating approach was not part of that formula. Makes sense, right? These Marvel comics bridged the age gaps and tried to be made for both kids and adults to enjoy. And a Disney production certainly can't make enough money if they can't also merchandise the films to death. So tailoring it away from the guts and gore just makes logistical sense for the entire MCU, you know? Even still, as an audience, we were getting a little tired of it. Wanting to see something new. And the Deadpool comics definitely come with a slight increase in age rating. The perfect translating material into the soon-to-be fresh-faced medium. Funnily enough, my brain is absolutely fine with watching the human shish kebab, but the sequel? Ugh. No, it's it's fine when it happens to Deadpool with the suit on, but anything else just curdles whatever's in my stomach. But I'm getting ahead of myself. With the release of Deadpool on a very romantic Valentine's week, it broke records, becoming the highest grossing X-Men film full stop, as well as the ninth highest grossing film of 2016, and topped the charts of every R-rated film before it. Clearly a beacon of the message that this formula was the way to go forwards, an impact we're still feeling today five years on. My god, has it already been five years? Even still, closely following that was more from the X-Men universe, with Logan also bringing us a whole new take on the superhero genre. Again, being gritty and dark, yet also severed from the rest of the canonical timeline so as to not alienate audiences. Same story there, the film blew up with its successes. Now, it's taken some time for these productions to influence long enough to actually get an inspired production fully made, but they do exist. Sure, there was Kingsman 2 first, another Fifty Shades film, and obviously Deadpool sequel, but 
Looping around to 2019, we can see the inspiration in action. Deadpool and Logan are both Marvel productions, not quite in the same realm as the innocent-ish MCU that was still doing its thing, but DC had certainly caught wind of the trend. Sure, they'd been making all sorts of grittier superhero movies anyway with their latest rendition of Batman and all that, but Joker was the film set to go that extra little mile, and boy did it ever. Breaching the worldwide highest grossing R-rated movie by a third of the leading competition. While Deadpool 1 and 2 made three quarters of a billion dollars, Joker smashed that with over a billion first try. Even if Deadpool was influence source number one, then Joker with its undeniable box office sensory overload was certain to be the concrete path for all else to follow through on. Of course, with 2020, not much else has actually come out other than Birds of Prey, but just look into the future now. There's James Gunn's Suicide Squad, Zack Snyder's Justice League Snyder Cut, The Kingsman, though I guess that's to be expected, along with Deadpool 3, Venom 2's getting an R rating now. And if you're invested this far in, why not do me a favor and subscribe? Also, we've now made a TikTok account, producing original content there too. And streams have returned every Wednesday, highlights of which you can find under the video in hashtag DazReviews. Other than that, send suggestions through our Discord or check out our other links. And even Sony is looking to join on the bandwagon with Sony Pictures Animation President Christine Belson stating in June of 2020 that she predicts there to be an uprising of animated movies directed towards older audiences due to the overall booming interest caused by it which must not be named. Interesting. She went on to say, I don't think you're gonna see more family animated movies because that's very saturated. There will be more R-rated animated movies. According to her, this is beyond just the superhero genre now, and though it's still early days and we literally have a family-based Sony animation stuck in delay limbo already right now from them, it is true that as per Belson's quote, there are a couple Sony are working on right now. One we even know of somewhat is fixed. There's no imagery or anything yet, so I have no idea how my editor's gonna piece this together. But we are granted with the knowledge that it too is R-rated, it's being directed by the director of the Hotel Transylvania films, and it's all about an average all-round dog who is in love with the show dog next door, and what happens when he learns that he's gonna be neutered in the morning. Brought to you by the same studio that made Sausage Party all those years ago. Though apparently it's not quite that crude. The director says that they're trying to be a character comedy, it's not just all about balls. We'll see how that turns out. But either way, it's clear this wave of R-rated content is only to arrive in many forms. So all of that is currently what's happening now, and though this R-rated craze technically started 47 years ago and only blew up 5 years ago and is still somehow just coming, I'm curious to see in what forms this new wave really comes through. Because whether this really is doom or gloom is debatable. Here's the thing, part of the reason the R rating works so great for Deadpool in the first place is that it fits his character to a T. His comics are gory, it's the whole point of Deadpool. An undefeatable healing power makes for great eye candy if you're not the vomiting kind, and allows for a character to break down the archetypes of the superhero genre, taking everything much less seriously since there's never real stakes in his life. And that Deadpool movie and its sequel are goofy. The silliness and elements they play with in those two films allow for the film to be still somewhat accessible despite its less filtered boundaries. Then take on Logan. With silliness turned down to practically zero, it's dark and serious, grim and gross. I still can't watch the final fight scene personally, and I'm sure the YouTube algorithm thanks me for that. But while a film like this certainly loses a part of its younger audience due to all of its material, the fact that it is segmented away as an alternative reality allows for the story to not take away from the broad fans of the characters and the series, because the correct versions of the characters are still available in the normal PG-13 or whatever rating they all have. These two elements between these two films are part of the foundational material of a successful R-rated establishment going forwards, but it's not necessarily what the film industry may be taking to heart as they replace repeat these previous successes. To a lot of people on the surface, an R rating just means a darker, grittier take for the more grown-up audiences of a franchise, and that's debatably problematic. 
since it entirely alienates a vital part of a series' established audience. If it's treated like the canonical entry you must see to understand, whilst also taking itself far too seriously, then a chunk of your audience will be seemingly abandoned for the current trend in the movies. And that element of the R rating craze can have some serious repercussions. DC loves their dark and gritty takes on what are essentially IPs built for children. And if through this trend they do alienate their younger audiences, just in order to have a successful film in these times, then in due time, those kids may abandon or never get into these IPs because it was never made for them anymore at a crucial time when their loyalty can be cemented. Not to mention the general fatigue a lot of us may feel soon from just the constant downers of storytelling potentially clogging up all of our entertainment. Life sucks enough as it is, you know? But who knows? Not everything is doomed just yet. DC's Joker, although chasing and framing that formula even more, is somewhat a side story to the established lore, and James Gunn's upcoming Suicide Squad looks to be leaning into the silly, which is great. The MCU seems to be remaining in what's working fine so far, so kids can certainly get into superheroes through that route still, though even they may technically gain an R rating addition soon through the swallowing and future production of Deadpool 3, which I'm sure will tackle itself just as appropriately as it's already done twice. I'll just squirm over the katana scenes. And again, it'll likely just be silly and probably somewhat separate too, like it was alongside X-Men. And then, bring us back to the reason I'm even talking about this topic this week, there's Mortal Kombat. A movie that could be just as unsilly as it wants to be with its physics-defying spandex ensemble, and could be established as the canonical following regardless, simply because, like the start of Deadpool's reign, the source material was built to be R-rated. The gore is written directly into the stone that is the identity of the original. And hey, this certainly isn't a story for young kids anyway. So maybe with at least those three major examples in the future, this new R-rating craze isn't so bad to look forward to after all. We'll just see how it kind of continues after that fact. Maybe it'll... Maybe it'll trail off really quickly. We'll just have to see how everyone else chooses to keep up. And I apologize in advance if maybe I'm doing something else on Mortal Kombat's release. I like my bodily insides being on the inside, funnily enough. Much like I'm sure the characters being fatalized. So, uh, word. But tell me your thoughts on this new R rating trend or any other industry topic you'd like to hear me chat about or something. It's kind of a new series. I I've just called it Other. So, uh... I'll work on it. And thank you to ImmortalGuy357 on Discord for suggesting the idea in the first place. For now, my name's been Daz. You didn't really care. Next week we'll be covering a terrible movie that was redubbed from British to American. And I'll see you in a bit. Oh hey, that's something new, a mysterious second end screen video. This is from our second channel of stream highlights. As of now, I'm streaming every Wednesday and any new trailers will be analysed live there weekly, so come check it out on Twitch or see the library thereafter through this link.